Now we're going to talk about push-outs, which are the dual of pullbacks. As you've probably worked out by now, um, all limits and co-limits come in kind of pairs because there's always a dual case. And so far, the examples of limits that we've had have been um, terminal objects and products and pullbacks. And the examples of co-limits that we've had have been initial objects, co-products, and now we're going to see push-outs. Now, how do you tell which ones are the limits and which ones are the co-limits? Well, one answer is they're really just the same thing. One's in the opposite category, uh, blah, blah, blah. But another answer is it's about which direction your universal property is going in. So I'll say a little bit more about that once we've done push-outs. Now, push-outs are the dual of pullbacks. Uh, so all we have to do is turn all the arrows around in this diagram and use exactly the same definition. Um, however, I'm not just going to plunge in and mangle this diagram because I want to leave that one there so we can compare it. And because usually um, push-outs are written the other way to keep our flow going this way down through the world rather than flowing sort of backwards up through the world. So what's, what's a push-out? Well, we're going to start with the following data. Um, perhaps I shouldn't have used such similar notation. Oh well. Uh, so we start with maps going to A and to B from the same place. And so what's our uh, push out going to be? It's going to give us a vertex here, U, the universal one, together with a pair of insertion maps like this, making this diagram commute. So this is a commuting square. And now we need a universal property, which is that this one's got to be the best one out of all those commuting squares. So we're going to say, given any other one, together with, so given any V, together with maps S and T, making the outside of this commute, there has to be a unique factorization in that direction. Uh, so this is, there is a unique factorization H. So the way to remember which way around this factorization goes is you've got to think, okay, this is your universal one. And what you've got to say is that every other one factors through the universal one, which means that the universal one is kind of a factor of the other one. You're taking the universal one and you have to sort of stick a bit onto it, multiply it by something in order to get um, the non-universal one. And the same is true here. The universal one uh, is the smaller one, as it were. And so to get the outside part, you've got to compose it by another morphism in order to get the outside part. And if you think about it like that, you can never get your thing going in the wrong direction. Um, but secretly, secretly, I just always visualize this diagram for a pullback and that one for a push-up, and then I always know which way around I'm going. Um, oh, by the way, if this is a pullback square, we quite often write a little thing like that in the top left-hand corner. And for a push-out, to indicate a push-out, we often write a little thing like that in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, now, you're probably wondering what a push-out is in sets. That's an excellent question. Well done. Good question. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at push-outs in sets. So if these are sets and functions, the push-out here, what it's going to be, so you should think to yourself for a second, but it's going to be a bit like a co-product. Um, remember here what we did was we took the product and then we modified it a bit. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the co-product and we're going to modify that a bit. So co-product of what? Just hallucinate away this part of the diagram and you've just got an A and a B and the co-product here. So that's like taking the disjoint union of A and B. So we're going to start by taking the disjoint union of A and B. However, we don't stop there because we've got this extra condition, right? It's got to this part of the diagram has to commute, um, which means that we can't just stick A and B together because imagine this, there's some little element in C. It goes somewhere in A, goes somewhere in B. Now they both land in the disjoint union. Oh no, they haven't landed in the same place. So how do we fix that? Well, we just force them to be the same. So what we do is we quotient out by an equivalence relation. Which equivalence relation? Well, exactly the one we need, of course. The one that is generated by, so we quotient out by this equivalence relation, generated by uh, f of c has to be equivalent to g of c for all c in c. Now, 
When we say generated by, we may have to add some, these won't be all the relations that we have, right? Because if f of c, if f of c1 is equal to f of c2, then that'll create some more things that we need. So let me write this over here. So if, if we have f of c1 is actually equal to f of c2, then according to this equivalence relation, f of c1 is going to have to be equivalent to g of c1, and f of c2 is going to have to be equivalent to g of c2. But because this is an equivalence relation, that means that these two things will have to be equivalent to each other as well. So that's going to be another one. You see, this is now g of c1 is equivalent to g of c2. That's not something that was actually explicitly stated in here. So um, how do you say what's, this, what's the equivalence relation generated by these things? Well, it's the push out. Uh, uh, perhaps I'll move swiftly on now. What was I going to say apart from that? Oh, yes. There's my favorite pullback and push out diagram, which I would now like to uh, put here. Um, by the way, pullbacks and push outs are very good prototype examples of limits and co limits. Mm -hmm. um, so if you sort of see other limits and co limits, for example, in set, then they work pretty much like pullbacks and, and push outs do. Uh, now, consider sets. Well, why am I writing that on the board? I don't know. I'll just do this instead. So suppose that we've got sets A and B. If we put the intersection here, and we put the union here. This is a rather pleasing diagram. The intersection has a natural inclusion into A, and it has an inclusion in B. And A has an inclusion into this union. This isn't a disjoint union, it's a union. And B also has a, an inclusion in here. And this diagram is, in fact, both a pullback and a pushout, which is rather satisfying, is it not? I think that's all I'm going to say now.